It's been five months since I uploaded Nintendo Sucks, and considering by far it is the most popular video on my entire channel, I think it's only fair I make a bit of an update to it. Nintendo, five months later, still sucks. Shocker. I know, but there's some extra content that I want to talk about, beginning with the Nintendo Switch OLED, which got announced literally the day after I uploaded my video. In the original Nintendo Sucks, I touched briefly on the idea of a Switch Pro. The thought process originally for the Switch Pro was that it was a mid-gen refresh of the Switch with improved hardware to run more demanding games and allow developers more options with the games they're currently developing. I mean, it's no secret that the Switch is underpowered. It's the same as it's been since it originally released in 2017, and even then it was pretty underpowered. With like 90% of the trailers shown at Nintendo's E3 spot in summer lagging at some point, it seemed like a bit of a no-brainer to update the hardware, but instead we kind of just got very minimal improvements. The things that actually matter here is that the Nintendo Switch OLED comes with improved audio, a wider stand, a LAN port that just eats up what once was a USB port, and the most notable change being the larger OLED screen. The screen over Overall is definitely an improvement, I mean just look at the colors on this thing. But for $50 more than the original Switch, it's not worth it for anyone who already owns one to go out and buy the OLED. Obviously this is just meant for people who are buying the Switch for the first time, but this seems like the Switch that Nintendo originally wanted to release back in like 2017, but just didn't for whatever reason. Did you notice the thing that's missing from my list of improvements though? Nowhere did I mention any sort of a fix to Joy-Con drift, and Nintendo didn't either. Quite possibly the largest issue with the OG Switch was the fact that these Joy-Cons had a huge chance to just start drifting randomly. If there was anything to consider fixing in the mid-gen refresh of the Switch, it was Joy-Con drift, but they just completely ignored the issue like they have been since people first started noticing it. What annoys me the most is that it's been shown just how easy it is to fix this problem, and all it takes is just a little piece of cardboard. That's it. One tiny little piece of cardboard, and the issue is gone. The Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack is stupid. Obviously, I like the fact that we're finally getting N64 games that can be playable on the Switch, but the execution leaves a lot to be desired. The biggest issue here is the price of the thing. A whole 30 extra dollars every year just for the opportunity to play N64 games, essentially rent some Animal Crossing DLC, and also getting access to games that were on the Sega Genesis. I've seen some people try to say that the point of the expansion pack is just to eventually expand the service to focus more on the idea of giving you access to a bunch of DLC for games without having to go out and buy those individual DLCs, but like, no. <laughs> Nintendo knows exactly what they're doing by forcing you to pay this much to get access to N64 games on the Switch. It's quite literally what everyone was asking for. Hell man, I asked for it, I just didn't think it was ever gonna happen. Also, where's like any N64 game or GameCube game? So, 30 more dollars, what type of N64 games are we getting here? Well, I hope you enjoy choosing from just 9 games, oh but don't worry, more games are coming, eventually. I'll admit that we have some classics here to choose from, but who exactly was the person picking the games list? I'm so sorry to the tens of diehard Dr. Mario 64 fans, or the one guy out there who wants to play Winback Covert Operations, but we're choosing this over getting Majora's Mask Day of Launch? Banjo-Kazooie? I wouldn't even really care that much if these other games actually came out quicker, but the expansion pack came out in October, and it took two whole months for Paper Mario to come out, so I can assume we can expect Banjo or Majora's Mask in like 2023? Alright, if the games are limited, and I'm paying an extra $30, how's the experience? Is it actually better than regular Nintendo Switch Online? Hell no, it still sucks! The online experience is exactly what you'd expect from NSO. Laggy, unintuitive, and at some points completely unplayable. For a company so hell-bent on being anti-emulation, their emulator kinda blows. Multiple games have texture bugs, glitches, and there's a small yet noticeable to speedrunners amount of input lag in nearly every game. The standout for me here is that Super Mario 64 suffers from this input lag, but 3D All-Stars on the same system doesn't? They finally added Bluetooth to the Switch, which is something I talked about last time. Back in September, they added the feature in an update for the Switch, and it only took four years. The issue for me here is that because they just added this in an update, this was always possible, and they actively chose not to add it for four years. Nintendo, you made a portable console. You genuinely expected people to carry this shit around in their pockets to listen to Nintendo game soundtracks because you just nuked them off of YouTube instead? Finally, I've gotten comments, video responses, and literal MLA format essays in my DMs talking about my video and I just want to say that I'm not actually that serious. Obviously none of these problems are going to make me wither away or melt, but honestly sometimes I just enjoy being negative and kind of a hater for fun. Nintendo is just really easy to complain about.